Welcome to this tutorial video on the Vaisala WXT520. At the end of this video, you should be able to do four things. One, understand how the sensor works and what it measures. Two, how to be able to install a brand new one at an Ecomet station. Three, being able to do routine maintenance on that sensor. And four, being able to wire this sensor into a CR1000 data logger. The WXT520 is a small, lightweight weathered instrument that measures six separate parameters. Air temperature, station pressure, relative humidity, wind speed, wind direction, and precipitation. While the majority of these sensors are duplicates, the station pressure sensor is the official measurement for the Econet. The sensor is placed at two meters above the surface. There are three main sensors that measure all parameters in the WXT520. Wind speed and direction are measured using the Weisselow wind cap sensor. The sensor has an array of three equally spaced ultrasonic transducers on a horizontal plane. Wind speed and direction are determined by measuring the time it takes the ultrasound to travel from each transducer to the other two. The wind sensor measures the transit time in both directions along the three paths. The transit time depends on the wind speed along the ultrasonic path. The wind speed is calculated from the measured transit times. Measuring the six transit times allows the wind speed to be computed for each of the three ultrasonic paths. Using the wind speed values of the two array paths is enough to compute the wind speed and wind direction. A signal processing technique is used so that wind speed and wind direction are calculated from the two array paths of best quality. Wind speed is measured in meters per second and wind direction is measured in degrees. The wind direction reported by the WXT520 is the direction in which the wind is coming from. So 0 in degrees indicates north, 90 degrees indicates east, 180 degrees indicates south, and 270 degrees indicates west. It should be noted that when wind speeds drop below 0.05 meters per second, wind direction is not reported. Rather, the previous wind direction wind speeds were above 0.05 meters per second are used. The precipitation sensor is measured using the Weisselow RainCap Sensor 2 technology in precipitation measurement. The sensor comprises of a steel cover and a piezoelectrical sensor mounted on the bottom surface of the cover. The precipitation sensor detects the impact of individual raindrops. The signals from the impact are proportional to the volume of the drops, hence the signal of each drop can be converted directly into accumulated rainfall. Noise filtering is used to filter out signals not associated with raindrops. Measured parameters include accumulated rainfall, rain current, and peak intensity, and the duration of the rain event. We only return the accumulated rainfall to the data logger. The sensor can also distinguish between hail from raindrops. The PTU module contains separate sensors for relative humidity, air temperature, and station pressure. The measurement principle of the pressure, temperature, and humidity sensors is based on an advanced RC oscillator and two reference capacitors against which the capacitance of the sensor is continuously measured. The microprocessor of the transmitter performs compensation for the temperature dependency of the pressure and humidity sensors. Okay, we're going to talk about how to replace the WXT520 you got in the field, you get a brand new one. Now there are two types of connections with the WXT520. There's just a regular pigtail wire and there's an actually a nine pin connector. This one has a nine pin connector on it. The big difference is when you get to the site, if you can see the cable through the post, if you can see the cable outside the post, it's the pigtail connector. If you, if you don't see the cable at all, it's the nine pin uh, nine pin connector. Like I said, this is a nine pin connector. So we're going to replace this one with another nine pin connector. Step one, you're going to want to find a gray tab located on the sensor and you're going to want to remove that gray tab. That, that, uh, show, that exposes a locking screw. That lock, step two will be to remove the locking screw. So you're just going to take your Allen key. These Allen keys are in every enclosure box. So each Econet site has one. You're just going to Loosen it, and as you loosen it, at that point then, you'll just need to pull the sensor up. Okay, we've pulled it up enough so we've exposed the cable. So all you're gonna have to do here is unscrew on the bottom here, and this should pull right out as so, and you can see the connector on the bottom here. So then all you have to do is match the new connector with the cable here. Okay, I've got it matched. We're gonna tighten it back up. And we're going to slide it back down onto the tube. All right, so you've put it back into place. So we're just going to go ahead and screw it back on. Now it's important to make sure that the sensor is oriented properly when you screw it back on. There's a north arrow at the bottom. 
Make sure it's pointing north when you tighten it up. A little trick of the trade here is usually when you unscrew it and put it back up, the little screws made a little indention onto the metal post. So what you can do is just line that back up. I've lined it up already. I'm just going to go ahead and tighten it up. It's been tightened. And now you just slide the little cover back on. And you've replaced the Vysla WXT 520. Okay, now we're going to talk about how to replace a Vysla WXT 520. Now there are two connection types with these WXT 520s. The way to find out, so there's a nine pin multi-connector and then there's a pigtail connector. So the pigtail connector, you can see if you get to a site and you see the cable outside the metal pipe here. If the metal pipe, if you can't see a cable and the cable's inside the metal pipe, you're using the nine uh, pin multi-connector, which we can show in another video how to do that. So here's how you replace WXT with the cable out. First step you're gonna do is you're gonna look for a gray tab and you're gonna pull it out. Step two, you're going to unscrew uh, the sensor from the pipe. So you're going to take the Allen key that you can find in the uh, white enclosure box. Every enclosure box should have one. You're just going to unscrew it. And you should be able to lift it right off. Okay. Once you lift it right off, what you're going to need to do is you're actually going to need to unwire the, the cable from the sensor itself. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a screwdriver to unscrew or a a number three Allen wrench, depending on how the screws are mounted. They're either flatheads or they're the number three mounts or hex bolts. Um, this one has flatheads. So we'll use a flathead screwdriver, unscrew it, and we'll, we'll disconnect the bottom sensing equipment from the sensors themselves on the top part. All right, so once you've uh, pop the top of the WXT from the bottom. Uh, you're going to notice an electrical board in the middle and a blue connector on top. Uh, with a pigtail wire connection, the pigtail wires would come in through the bottom right hole that's uh, highlighted here, and all the wires would be in the electrical panel here in the middle. Uh, for sake of the, the demonstration here, we've taken the wires out. That blue connector on top is the important part. That connects the sensing equipment at the top of the body to the, the electrical uh, board on the bottom here, which sends the data back to the data logger. What you'll need to do is you'll need to remove the top part of the sensor using that blue tab. You can do it by hand and just pry it out. And then when we give you a new sensor, you just put that new part in. Make sure that the, the, uh, the pins line up correctly. There are two sets of pins, and sometimes you'll connect it and you'll think it's connected, but you'll only have gotten one set of pins, and that will actually in, 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 give you wrong numbers. So once that's put in correctly, you can just put the top on back on top, and you're ready to put the whole thing back together. So once you've put your end cap back on, now you have the sensor, you're just ready to mount it back onto the pipe. So the key is there's a north arrow located on every Vysel WXT 520. This one's written upside down, but it's a north arrow. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put it back on the pipe. You wanna make sure that that's pointing north. Trick of the trade that I've learned through my years of doing this is when we install these on metal pipes, when we tighten that screw to lock onto the pipe, it leaves an indention on the pipe. So it's kind of your way of, it's already being oriented correctly. So you could just look for that little screw pipe or that little uh, screw indention. Say it's right there. Now I'm going to tighten it. So I know it's been oriented correctly. And once it's tightened, your final step is to put this back on. And you've replaced the WXT 520. So the main thing you need to do when you maintain a WXT520 is to replace the PTU module located inside the radiation shield. We need to replace these every two years. So here's a step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace a PTU module. Step one, and the most important step on here, is to turn the power off to the sensor. As long as you turn the power off, you can keep yourself not only damaging the sensor, but possibly hurting yourself too when you replace with the, electron, the electrical units in there. Step two, remove the set screws located underneath the sensor. Now you're either gonna need a number three Allen wrench or a flathead screwdriver. This one needs a flathead screwdriver, so you're gonna loosen those. Once the screws have been loosened, you're gonna need to pop the top of the sensor off. Do this, you just hold down, push up. The screws should have loosened up the entire body. Just be careful how you do it. So I popped it up and you slowly pull out the PTU module. So this is the PT module, as you can tell, it's very dirty, needs to be cleaned, so let's go ahead and remove it. To remove the PTU module, you're gonna need to pull the tab here, that's on, and I guess in the video here, it's gonna be on top, 
and slide it out. You may need a flathead screwdriver to help pry it out. Be very careful though when you do this that you don't want to break it. And if you break not only the flathead screwdriver, but if you want to, if you break piece of the PT module off, it may not come out. So. As you can see. Slides out. Next, you want to take the new PTU module that you, that you can find in this box. This is the box that it's coming in with. Take the new PTU module and slide it in. Just like you pulled it out, you're going to slide it in. And it should snap into place. After you've put the new PTU module in place, all you're going to do is lower it back in. Make sure the, the holes line up with the screws on top. Push down and it should connect. Finally, what you're going to do is reset these screws, tighten them up, once the screws are tightened, you can use a screwdriver or a hex wrench, once they're tightened, you're good to go, you can just turn on the data logger and power supply, and you're set to go. Alright, so when you're using the pigtail connector, you're going to have seven wires. Uh, the video you see here, there's a data, CR1000 data logger and a power supply with a battery pack to the left. Now, with the connections to, this, to the data logger, the red and the black cables go towards the power supply because they're used for heating the WXT. Like I mentioned earlier in this video, they have heating properties on the wind uh, the wind measurements and the precipitation. So the red wire is going to go into a positive, the black wire into a negative into the power supply. On the data logger themselves, the yellow wire goes into the 12 volt channel, the blue wire goes into the C1 channel, green, white, and clear all go into a ground channel. Alright, if you have a 9-pin connector instead of the pigtail, it's a little different. There are 8 wires instead of 7, and the colors go into different channels. So in this case, again, you're going to need two that go into the power supply, uh, because we do have a heating element with these. The yellow cable is going to go into the power supply uh, positive terminal. The pink cable is going to go into the negative terminal of the power supply. The brown cable is going to go into your 12-volt channel. The blue cable and the white cable go into digital channel C1, and red, green, and shield all go into a digital ground channel. To review, the WXT520 is an all-weather sensor that measures six parameters at two meters above the surface. It measures station pressure, air temperature, relative humidity, wind speed and direction, and precipitation. The wind speed and direction use a sonic anemometer. The precipitation uses an impact sensor rain gauge. And station pressure, air temperature, and relative humidity are inside a PTU module that, use, that uses capacitance to determine the values. So there are two ways to install uh, the WST520, and it really depends on what type of connection you have. If you have a 9-pin connector, it's pretty simple. All you need to do is remove the sensor from the mounting post using that hex key to remove the locking screw, and then you're going to disconnect the sensor from the cable and install a new sensor on, place it back onto the post, and connect with the locking screw. A little different if you have a pigtail wire. If you have a pigtail wire, you're going to need to remove the sensor from the mounting post, just like with a 9-pin connector. But this time, you need to unscrew the bottom of the sensor from the top of the sensor using those set screws on the bottom of each sensor. Afterwards, you need to remove the top of the sensor by disconnecting the blue connector tab inside. Once that's done, you can install a new top of the sensor by installing a new connector, putting it back together, tightening the set screws, and putting it back on the mounting post. Just remember for both of these, when you put it on the mounting post, make sure the north arrow is pointed in the north direction. So the only real maintenance needed uh, for the WXT520 is replacing the PTU module. This needs to be done every couple of years. And here are a few ways, of, here's a few steps to do it. Uh, what you need to do is you need to loosen those set screws to keep the top and the bottom sensor together. And then remove the very top of the sensor. It's where the precip and the wind sensors are located. You can remove it by hand once those set screws have been loosened. 
And then you're just going to want to remove that PTU from underneath the precip sensor. Now, you need to use caution because you have to remember pop that tab open and pry it out. You may have to pry it out using a screwdriver. Just use caution not to damage the sensor. Afterwards, then you're going to insert the new PTU module and reconnect the sensor at the top of the sensor to the rest of it. Turn the sensor back on and you're good to go. So when wiring each one of uh, the WST520s, we're going to have two sets of wiring diagrams, and it really depends on the connector. If you have a pigtail connector, there are seven cables, as you see here. Red and black, remember, the PS in this case is power supply. Red and black will both go to the power supply, one to the heating positive, one to the heating negative. This provides power to the heater. Remember, the wind sensors and the precip sensor have the heating element to them. The yellow wire is going to go into the data logger 12-volt channel. This supplies power to the sensor. The blue wire is going to go to data logger C1. This gives it the signal, sends the values uh, to the data logger so that they can be computed. And then white, green, and clear are all going to go into the data logger digital ground channel. And then finally, the WXT. Here's the wiring diagram for the 9 pin connector. And there's eight cables this time instead of seven. Yellow and pink are your power supply, heating positive and negative respectively. Those are for the heater power. Uh, the brown cable is going to go into the data logger 12 volt channel. This gives you sensor power. Uh, the blue and white cables both go into data logger C1. So we need both of them to go in there to provide the signal for the sensor. And then green, red, and shield are all going to go into digital ground for sensor ground. You can put them all into the same digital ground channel that you would uh, that you like to choose. That concludes this training video on the Vaisala WXT520. For more videos, check out our website at climate.ncsu.edu.